Now getting back to the video, we're going to begin to line up the hair as normal. Be gentle when using your edgers, you're generally going to touch up the hairline a couple of times. All right, just be gentle when using your edgers. But on this front, the front edge, I want you guys just to try to edge up the overlapping hair. The hair that's overlapping that frontal hairline guy that we drew on, okay? I do not like to take the hair directly to that hairline guy. That happens on occasion, don't get me wrong. And nothing's wrong if it does, but I feel like it prolongs the hairline to look natural when you just get that overlapping hair. It'll be easier for the client to maintain. That's always my goal with this hair unit. Try not to go directly to that adhesive. I like to stay just on that edge. I do not like to go back into that adhesive. It just gives me some room for error. So in case I don't do a, a good hairline, like if I don't make it really straight for the client, it's not at their satisfaction, I have room to work. That's why I like to just stay on that overlapping hair. I like to give myself some room for error. I want you guys to do the same. Give yourself some room for error. Then after you line it up, just trimming any unwanted hair. I want that hairline to look as natural as possible. So I'm just trimming around some of that, that hair that's sticking out. Just taking my time, trying to perfect the work. I will not let my client leave until I'm satisfied with their work, with my work, excuse me. Anything I see, you see I'm just trying to remove some gaps, using that comb when needed. As you can see, the unit is good and secure. That comb is not even taking that unit out. But do not instruct them to comb their hair though. <laughs> they're, they're not to comb this at all. Some may try though. I think this this guy, I think he actually did use the pick with this actually. So I guess it can be done. This that's a trial and error for the clients though. Just to protect yourself, you can tell them don't touch it, don't comb it. Just use your fingers. But I'm just trying to remove those gaps. Get that loose hair right there, I gotta get off. I want you guys to see everything I'm doing with this. This is a technique, like I mentioned before, that hasn't been taught in any classes that I've been to. It's going to give you guys some cutting edge new material. Now I'm using my airbrush gun to enhance the hairline. I'm using some color that's G14 from At Polished Barbershop. That's their Instagram tag. So feel free to check them out. They got some pretty good products you can use. Then I also use it on the front hairline as well. And then you can also use it to fill in any gaps. Any gaps that you see, touch it up with the airbrush color. Now this is totally optional. A client may not want this, or if you don't have an airbrush gun, you don't have to do this. You can still camouflage it with some hair fibers and still have a really good look. this G14 actually acts as a concealer as well but you gotta be gentle with it because it is powerful I'm used to using it so you can see I have my airbrush gun color uh, I'm applying it close I'm very familiar with the product but I don't recommend you guys doing it I always spray at a distance this stuff is hard to remove once you apply it it's virtually it's very, very hard to move. I'm not gonna say it's impossible to be removed, but it's very hard to remove. So be gentle if you're using the G14 hair color. But to me, I think it's the best hair color on the market for hair units. 
but you don't want to apply too much at the same time because it can get gummy after a while when the client starts to sweat it can get really cakey and gummy like but this color lasts generally it can last a good week I would say five to seven days it's the longest lasting color I've used for enhancement purposes but when they come in for their touch up guess what you can reapply it and have the unit looking back sharp again now I'm using hair illusion hair fibers for this particular unit I really think the hair illusions is really good to use it mimics this hair texture when you're using fibers you want to use the fibers that mimic the hair texture for me topic wouldn't work for this at all so the hair illusions hair fibers are really good to mimic this hair texture But always remember to apply the hair fibers at a distance. Do a couple of test sprays actually first because sometimes initially, right when you get ready to apply the hair fibers, a big glump will come out and it won't look good. So just keep that in mind. Now I begin to apply a lock-in spray. This is similar kind of to a spritz. This is another product from G14. But I'm just trying to lock in that hair color in those hair fibers that I applied to the scalp. Then I top that off with some concealer spray to secure everything in once again. And these both are products from At Polish Barbershop. These are products that I use. So I'm giving you guys everything that I use so you can go ahead and purchase the same stuff and get started. Then I blow dry it on a cool setting. You see, I'm literally right on top of his scalp with this blow dryer. I know you can't see it, but I'm right on top of it. And that hair unit is not moving at all. But what it will do, it'll get those stragglers when you blow dry. So you can trim up any loose hair that you see. So that blow dry will help. But as you can see, guys, he looks totally natural. Super natural. And I personally recommend to use your fingers with this style. Some people may want to use the sponge, but I just don't want to risk anything from falling out. So I just use my fingers. I apply some mousse to it. But yeah, you can use products because it's human hair. That's another reason why I like doing this with human hair because products can be used. Whereas with synthetic hair, products can't be used. So I'm just doing some finger texturizing. Just want to give it a nice good smell. And if you want like a sponge look, you can kind of just do some finger twisting. If you want to, you can twist with your fingers, kind of give them that sponge kind of look. But I just recommend using your fingers when styling with this. And I recommend the clients to use their fingers as well. But at the end of the day, some of them will test the waters and do what they want to do. So don't worry about it. But just continue to perfect your work. Now these are some infinity hair fibers. It's kind of like a topic, but I like it better because topic to me is it's kind of like an ashy black. It's not a true black. The I guess the fibers are it's just like an ashy color to me. The best the best way I can describe it, these fibers aren't like that. The dark brown isn't an ashy dark brown, it's a dark brown. The black is a real black. That's what I like. I got more variety with it. With Topic, it just, I don't really like using Topic for hair units at all. But I always apply lock and spray after I apply any hair fibers. So keep that in mind because I want to conceal that look. And you can instruct your clients to go get some hair fibers keep the hair unit looking polished in between touch-ups that way they won't be so self-reliant on you and 
it really can prolong the unit and prolong the look. Then when they come in for the touch up, it'll look really good. And that's another way for you to continue to have them coming in so you can make money with a repeat customer. So all I'm doing now is just touching up my work. He's really good to go, but I'm a perfectionist. I really want him to look good and have confidence with this unit. So I just touch up any work that I feel I need to. I take my time. I want you guys to do the same. I want all my students to kill the game with these hair units. I want it to change your career like it has mine. These hair units have really changed my life. It's, it's done so much for me. It's allowed me to work less, spend more time with my family. And then knowing that I'm giving different people self-confidence is amazing. So you can do the same for you. If you perfect these techniques, take your time, practice, and study. But he looks really good, looks really natural. And he did wear this for two months. Two whole months. And it was still holding. I'm just continuing to do touch up work at this moment. I'm just wanting to perfect the look the best way I can. So if you see an area in the fade that you want to touch up, touch it up. You want to set yourself apart from other people who are doing this because the barber industry is slowly catching on to it. Right now, it's still fresh. A lot of people aren't doing it, but more people are doing it now more than ever. So you have to set yourself apart. You have to let your units set you apart. There's some people in my area that do hair units, but I get so much clientele because they see the quality of my work. I want that to be the same for you guys as well. Let the quality of your work speak for itself. Charge whatever you want to charge. People will come. But now I'm beginning to razor the client, just staying on that edge definitely not going into the adhesive just staying on that edge just sharpening it up just trying to get that loose hair take your time with the razor always be gentle as you guys already know just polishing the look Touching it up again. As you can see, he's good to go. Always use a towel to wipe off any excess hair unit um, residue, I could say, from the forehead, whether it's hair fibers or whatever it is. That's typically what it is. But just wipe it off with a towel. But as you can see, he's ready. He looks really good. Confidence is restored. He loved it. And now he's ready to go. Completely natural. Completely undetectable. You don't have to worry about a track being shown. You can actually even take the hair unit a little lower than this as well. If need be. So you see him before. Now we're going to show you the after. You guys have the keys to execute this unit. Alright. Go kill the game take charge you are now certified thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video